YouTube family, what up though? If you didn't know, I am DJ Swaver, and this is another episode of Ottoman Box Openings. If you haven't already, be sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button next to the subscribe button so when I post something on YouTube, you get it first. Also, be sure you're giving me a follow on all the major social media platforms. I'm still in shock that I'm even having the ability to make this episode right here. The sneaker we're taking a look at in this episode was one that I for sure was expecting to not be able to get my hands on. I guess that good sneaker karma that I've been putting to the universe finally came back on me and somebody helped me get this rare sneaker for the retail assist. The sneaker we're taking a look at in this episode is the Atmos and Nike Air Max 1 DLX. Even though a lot of people were going after this sneaker, we all know that the crown jewel of Air Max Day is the Sean Wotherspoon Air Max 97 1. We're only a couple days away from the whole sneaker universe taking L's. I swear I've entered every raffle for this sneaker. Any boutique you could possibly think of. If they've done an internet raffle for that sneaker, guaranteed that I've entered it. But your boy is a realist. Am I expecting to win any of those raffles? Hell nah. But it never hurts to enter. I mean, it literally it only takes like a minute out of your day just to enter your info and hit submit. But this is where I draw the line. I will not enter any type of Instagram contest to win this sneaker. Now, if you go to my Instagram page, you'll probably see that I entered one Instagram contest for the Sean Wolverspoon Air Max 97.1. And the only reason I did that is because that boutique was the one that helped me get this Atmos Air Max 1. But other than that, I'm not reposting any sneaker picture. I'm not tagging three friends. I'm not putting my city and my sneaker size. I'm not doing nothing none of that to win a sneaker, bruh. Realistically, do you know anybody that has ever won a sneaker giveaway contest through Instagram? I know I don't, and I can almost guarantee that you don't know anybody either. The reason why is because all of that is a sham, bruh. We already know that boutiques do these Instagram contests just to get their follower numbers up. I'm pretty sure for a fact that those sneakers are already going to somebody's homeboy at the shop. Facts. I know a couple people right now that I follow that all you will see on their Instagram page are repost images of this Sean Wolderspoon 97.1. You basically are free advertisement for these boutiques. I said all that to say this. Do not waste your time doing any of these Instagram giveaway contests. I promise you that you're not gonna win. You put in all that work, reposted all those images, tagged all your friends just to get that same L that I'm gonna get on Air Max Day. And if for some weird reason me telling you this makes you feel some type of way, odds are it's because these down inside, you know the kid is right. But whatever fam, it's your social media, not mine. But on Monday, March 26th, let me know how that worked out for you. Enough about all that though. Let's go ahead and take a look at these dope sneakers. Now, like I said before, I was totally expecting to take an L on this pair of sneakers. I had entered a few raffles, but I really wasn't trying my hardest to get my hands on them because I already knew that most likely I was not going to be able to make that happen. Then out of the blue, the sneaker guys came to your boy's rescue. Shout out to Feist Gallery out of Salt Lake City. That's all I'm going to say about that. Fast forward a few days, we got the sneaker right here on this ottoman. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this dope sneaker. And this is the Nike and Atmos Air Max 1 DLX. This sneaker in hand is muy fuego, bruh. Y'all already know that I love crazy colors and crazy patterns on my sneakers. And this might be one of the craziest sneakers in my collection now. As you can see right here, the upper of this sneaker is comprised of all fine pony hair and different animal prints. The quality of this pony hair seems to be pretty good to the touch. But as time goes by and you have your natural wear and tear, I am also worried about this pony hair shedding from the sneaker. The upper of this sneaker utilizes three different animal prints. You have the cheetah print in the mud guard that goes around the whole complete sneaker. You have the tiger print on the middle portion of the upper and you also have the zebra print going around the whole ankle portion of the sneaker. In my opinion, the contrast between the three different animal prints are what make this sneaker dope. Another touch that I love about this sneaker is the green accented air unit inside of the classic Air Max 1 midsole. Just a dope accent that gives this sneaker that extra pop. Another accent that I'm loving about this sneaker is that bold red Nike check sitting on top of that animal print. On the rear portion of the sneaker, you have that classic Nike Air branding in the same green color that was present inside of the Air unit. In my opinion, having that Nike Air branding in that green color doesn't contrast well with the animal print on the rear portion of the sneaker. I honestly wish they would have used the same color red that they used on the Nike check. Even though that's my opinion, it still doesn't take away from the dopeness of this sneaker as a whole. The inside of the sneaker pretty much mirrors the outside of the sneaker. You have the three different animal prints used on the upper, the red Nike check, green accented Air unit inside 
out of a white midsole. The tongue of this sneaker is completely different from the rest of the upper. The tongue of this sneaker utilizes a brown pony hair material, completely different from the three animal prints used on the rest of the upper. The tongue also has that classic Nike Air Max branding in a red color, which matches the same red that is used on the Nike checks on each side of the sneaker. Last but not least, this sneaker utilizes a gum sole on the bottom of the sneaker. Goes perfectly with the browns utilized in the animal prints on the upper. The sneaker came with three other pairs of laces, a white pair, a red pair, and a green pair. I'm almost positive that I'm gonna use the red pair of laces just to match those red Nike checks. And that, for the most part, pretty much explains this Nike and Atmos Air Max 1. They were fire in pictures that I saw, but they were super fire once I got it in my hand. And no, I'm not saying that just because this sneaker was kind of limited and I was able to get my hands on them. If this sneaker was mass producing a lot of numbers, I would still be saying this sneaker is super fire. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving this sneaker an easy 9, bruh. To the fine pony hair and animal prints used on the upper, to the dope accents of the red Nike check and the green Air Max unit, there's nothing not to like about this sneaker. If anyone tells me this sneaker is not dope, I'm automatically going to classify you as a grade A hater, bruh. But of course, I want to know what y'all think about this sneaker. Let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this Nike and Atmos Air Max 1. Are you liking this sneaker? Are you not liking it? Did you get your hands on a pair? Are you looking to cop a pair on the resale market and you needed this video to kind of push you over the edge? Let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this particular sneaker. This sneaker completely sold out in minutes on its release day, so unfortunately the only way to get your hands on a pair now is on the resale market. This sneaker retailed for $160, but in this size 13, I'm seeing a resale value between $300 and $350. Bucks. Considering that the resale at one point for this sneaker was around $700, bucks, getting this sneaker for $300 is a steal in my opinion. As more people are getting their pairs, I'm almost for sure that the resale value for this sneaker will continue to drop. But I guarantee the window for that resale drop in price is gonna be small. Would I pay that $300 resale price for this sneaker? If I'm being honest, I dropped that $300 in a heartbeat. So if you got $300 laying around, pull that trigger, get your hands on a pair. Shout out to Fights Gallery for helping me make my day. I'm stoked to have this wild sneaker in my collection. And this is the Nike and Atmos Air Max 1 DLX. If you don't believe in sneaker karma, these sneakers right here are proof that sneaker karma is real in these streets. Once again, shout out to Fights Gallery for helping me get my hands on this pair. Maybe come Air Max Day, having this pair in my collection will kind of dumb down the pain of taking that super L on those Sean Rotherspoon 97 ones. Cause Lord knows, majority of us out here ain't getting our hands on those. But if that's the case, these Atmos Air Max ones are a pretty good consolation prize. If you haven't already, smash that thumbs up button, smash those like buttons for me, and if you haven't already definitely subscribe 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 and when you subscribe be sure to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button so when i post something on youtube you get it first once again i am dj swaver this was another episode of ottoman box openings and until next time peace